activity of cork cambium stem. Let us focus our attention on a dicot plant. A sectional view of the stem reveals that epidermis, which consists of a single row of cells, forms the outermost layer. Colonchyma cells are arranged in four to five layers forming the hypodermis. The thin-walled parenchymatous cells which constitute the general cortex lie inner to the hypodermis. A few barrel-shaped cells are arranged in a single layer to form the endodermis. Some sclerenchymatous patches and intervening parenchyma together constitute pericycle, which lies next to the endodermis. Phloem lies inner to the pericycle. Cambium separates the xylem and the phloem. Let us now look at the simplified view of this stem section with the cambial ring. As the plant matures, the cambium gives rise to the secondary phloem and secondary xylem element on the outer side and inner side respectively. The newly formed cells exert pressure on the cortex and the epidermis. To prevent this, the outer layer of colonchyma becomes meristematic and divides to produce a thin strip of thin-walled, roughly rectangular cells which constitutes the cork cambium. The cork cambium cells in turn divide repeatedly to add cells on the inner side to constitute the secondary cortex or phalloderm and to form a cork or phallum on the outer side. The cork phallum, cork cambium phallogen and the secondary cortex phalloderm are collectively known as the periderm. The cork cells are dead, suberized, thick-walled and do not allow the loss of water through the stem. The outer tissue, that is epidermis, along with cork itself, constitutes the bark of the plant.